Welcome to the Word with Bishop Hannah. This is your day for a breakthrough. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and together let us all bless his holy name. What a wonderful God we are serving. I am so happy and indeed humbled to be in your company another time. This is Bishop Eulen A. Hannah Sr., and I am just thankful to God for his faithfulness. Look at it. Look at God. We are already in the month of February, in the year of our Lord, 2022. I say to God be the glory, great things he has done. And watch this. You thought that you could not made it through, or you may not have made it through January 2022. But look at God. You are already in the first week of 2022 of February. God is good. He is awesome. It tells me then that you and I must continue to praise him and to lift up his wonderful name. Interestingly enough, our topic today is I choose to praise him. I choose to praise him. Right at the, at the outset, we are understanding then that if we choose to praise God, we can also choose to do something else. I pray that as this message progresses, your conclusion will be not to do something else, but to praise God. It is in praising God that we have absolute victory. It is, in, it is in praising God that we have authority over the enemy. And hopefully again, this message today will go along that line in helping us to understand that when we praise God, something, something very uniquely happens to you and uh, myself. Okay? Again, I choose to praise God. As we serve God, there are many persons who are deeply offended that we are so inclined. And therefore, in many instances, Christians are the brunt of criticisms and uh, isolation. In Acts chapter 16, Paul had an unusual encounter with a damsel who had a spirit of divination. According to Google, divination from the Latin divinare is to see or to foresee to foretell, to predict, to prophesy. It is the attempt to gain insight into a question or situation by way of an occultic standardized process or ritual, unquote. The passage reveals, that is Acts chapter 16, the passage reveals that because of this spirit, this young woman brought great gain or significant profit to her masters or those who handled her. On seeing Paul performed under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and that persons were being made free from their state of bondage, this young woman, this damsel, decided to follow the apostles around. After a while, Paul, his spirit got grieved at the fact that this young woman was just there, perhaps creating a distraction. And so in Acts chapter 16, verse 18b, here's what the passage says. Paul looked at this young woman and he said to her, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Now this is a very amazing passage of scripture because right away it tells me and it should tell all of us that God's power is greater than the power of any satanic force. It is greater than the power of any diviner, any person, any individual who has taken it upon him or herself to demonstrate their foul spirit and their foul power in the presence of a person who is filled with the Spirit of God. I want to say this at this juncture right here because many times, many of God's people or many persons feel handcuffed and you feel as if you have to stay in the situation you are in. You know it's demonic. You know it's satanic. But you feel as if this power is so much greater than the power of God. But in this one instance, 
Paul, listen to these strong words. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. He took authority and he said, what I am about to say is a command. That's number one. Number two, I am not just commanding you, but I am commanding you in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this Jesus Christ? This Jesus Christ is the Son of God who just recently went to the cross, who recently went to his grave, but who most recently was resurrected victoriously from the grave, from the dead on the third day. And Paul is saying, I, Paul, with the constituent power that God has placed in me, I command you, demonic force, you spirit of divination, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Needless to say, the spirit left her right away. This reality angered her masters, and immediately they decided to concoct a story that led to Paul and Silas being arrested on charges against the state. Whenever you stand for God, whenever you stand in holy boldness, whenever you stand in righteousness for the Son of God and for the gospel, expect for the enemy to come after you. Expect for the enemy to target you, but also have the assurance that the same God in whose name you operate is the same God who will give you victory in that very same hour. Because of a corrupt judicial system, the apostles were convicted, physically whipped, and then sent to prison with the jailer given strict instructions to keep them safely. As if this was not enough, the jailer, according to scripture, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. In other words, they were not going anywhere. And this, this is so tremendous because here it is. Layer after layer after layer, they had a sense, that is the enemy of the apostles, they had a sense that they were securing and they were making it almost impossible or virtually impossible for these men of God to escape. But child of God, I want to say it again. Whatever your situation may be, whatever the encumbrance may be that the enemy is coming at you again or coming against you with, rest assured that God is more powerful than any force of the enemy. God is more, God is, is more, God is more focused in on his children when we feel as if our back is against the wall and the odds may be stacked against you. It may appear as if the enemy is going to win this one, but wait a minute. God has the last say in the lives and in the affairs of his children. I am speaking to someone today. You feel covered over. You feel overwhelmed. You feel completely burdened and distressed by what you're going through. I am saying to you, do not hurt yourself. Do not despise God. Do not even hate the people who hate you. Wait on the Lord and you will see that God will come through for you. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Victory is yours. Praise you, Jesus. And so Paul and Silas, going back to the script, Paul and Silas were in a very, very bad place. Here, they were doing the work of ministry, and now it landed them in prison. For many believers, this would have been too much for them to deal with. But these men knew their God, and they were satisfied that God was with them. I want to ask you a question. Perhaps you may think it's rhetorical, but I want to ask you this question. Do you know your God? Do you know his power? Do you know his ability to deliver and to set his people free? Do you know that this awesome God is present everywhere and in every situation which concerns his children? Do you know your God? These men knew their God so well that they were not perturbed by their current circumstances. They did not make any requests of God to free them. Listen to me, listen to me. They did not go on a hunger strike. They did not protest the conditions of their incarceration. Instead, they did something radically different. Praise you, Jesus. 
they did something radically different. The posture they took was one that caught the attention of the prisoners. Oh, praise you, Lord. Acts 16 and 25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. This is a loaded passage of scripture. This is, this is, this is something that is worth reflecting. Let's unpack this in, 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 in its detail as much as we can. In the midst of confinement, these men started to pray. I ask you, beloved in Christ, what do you do when you are confined, when it, when it appears as if the whole world is closing in on you? What do you feel? What do you do when it feels as if your, your options are being diminished? one by one by one in the midst of confinement these men started to pray they began to sing and they started to praise god in the midst of uncertainty and a hostile judicial system they determined that it made more sense to praise God. I say it again, beloved in Christ, I don't know what you're faced with. I don't know what your family problems are. I don't know what your mental state is. I don't know what your spiritual condition is. But I want to say to you that in the midst of your reality, you determine, I am going to pray, I am going to praise, and I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. I am not going to let my circumstances dictate to me. I am not going to let my, my environment determine my praise. I am going to praise God. Why? Because God dwells on the inside. And my circumstances, my external circumstances, are but for a season. Praise you, Jesus. And so, in isolation, these men praised God. In unfamiliar surroundings, they praised God. Despite, despite being in what you, would, what you would perhaps call maximum security, they praised God. Despite the stocks on their feet restricting their physical movement and their agility, they were more interested in praising God. They were not, they were not thinking about the repercussions. Uh, instead, uh, they made up their minds that praise was what they would do. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to a family. In 2022, you're going through a rough patch. You thought that by now things would have changed because you heard all sorts of prophecies. You heard men and women of God declaring and decreeing so many things over you and over your life. But to date, it has not happened. Do not become dejected. Do not feel as if God has neglected and abandoned you. Do not feel as if God has other priorities. Make up your mind that despite what I'm going through, I am going to anchor myself right here and I'm going to praise God until my circumstances, hallelujah, until my circumstances change. I don't care how rough it looks with your children. I don't care the disrespect that you are receiving at the hands of people in the work environment. I don't care the innuendo they are throwing your way and the wicked and pernicious things they are saying about you. I am declaring in the name of Jesus Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I choose to praise God despite what is going on in my current situation. I say again, I do not know your current circumstances. I do not know what you have to contend with. I do not know how the odds are stacked against you. I do not know who is on your side or who may have been scheming and even now may be scheming and conniving to create a disadvantage for you. I do not know the state of your finances. I do not know your quality of life. I do not know what it is like to be in your family. I do not even know perhaps what it is to be in your shoe. I do not know how people react when they see you. I do not know who or how many enemies you have at this very moment. I do not know what keeps you awake at night and causes you not to be able to sleep. I do not know how fearful you are about the future, but I know this, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know this. That if it's midnight in your experience, get ready for an earthquake. 
If it's midnight in your experience, get ready for the answer to prayer and praise. If it's midnight in your situation, get ready for a breakout and a breakthrough. I sense in my spirit speaking this across the airwaves that someone even now is receiving this in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy has had a vice-like grip on your spirituality. He had been choking and sapping you of the very life that you have in Christ Jesus. But I feel midnight approaching. I sense midnight is imminent. I sense that while others are sleeping and while others are in the doldrums of their own reality, I sense that God is going to burst out in a new way in your life. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Midnight represents the passing of the old and the ushering in of the new. Midnight represents potential. Praise you, Jesus. Midnight represents another chance, another opportunity. Many of the prisoners that night may have fallen asleep, deep into sleep. But at some point, it was clear to them when they were roused from sleep, it became clear to them that something unusual was going on in the prison block. Hallelujah. This was no jailbreak. This was no uprising. This was praise and worship in jail, in prison, in confinement, in loneliness, in darkness, in uncertainty. This was praise and worship. This was a hallelujah time that the men of God were having. And the people in their environment became aware, I dare say electrified, that something was happening. The prisoners, you see, were a captive audience. They could not run from the presence of God. You know, sometimes when people hear us saved and religious people having a wonderful time, people shut us down. They leave our environment. But these men could not leave the, the, the compelling power of the Holy Spirit and the fact that they were naturally confined to this area kept them right there. They saw they were about to see the anointing, the demonstration, and the tremendous power of God to deliver and to set his people free. Praise you, Jesus. Imagine a prisoner saying to people in the free world, I was in jail and I saw something. And imagine them describing what they saw. Imagine what that will do for those who are listening to them. This is not a Christian person reporting this, but these are hardened, perhaps hardened prisoners talking about what they saw, the phenomenon that they saw and that they experienced. There is something about serving God. They could not run, I said, from the presence of God. They heard unceasing prayers and worship, and they could not do anything about it. Child of God, I tell you, wherever you are, lift up your hands, lift up your voice, and praise God. Never let people in your community, never let people within your air shot dumb you down and shut you down and put you in a corner and tell you to sit still. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. It is him who woke you up this morning. It will be him who will wake you up tomorrow. It will be him, to use the word the old people use, who will have you closed uh, in your right mind. Uh, this is whom we are to praise. This is whom we are to lift up. Imagine that in this prison, a transformation is taking place. This was awesome prayer, praise, and worship service. I want to say it again. This was awesome prayer, praise, and worship. It wasn't important that the, that the, that the writer of this book recorded what they were singing. It wasn't even important that the writer recorded their words verbatim. What was important was that they were engaged in prayer, praise, and worship. What was important is that they were connecting from the heart, from the spirit, to heaven. They were connecting to the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This, this, was, this was demon chasing, prayer, praise, and worship. The thing that the authorities feared would happen on the outside of the prison 
started happening on the inside of the prison. Isn't that God? Isn't that God? When man shuts you down in one area, God just boosts you in, in, a, in a bigger way and reveal you and expose you in another environment. I want to tell someone, God is bigger than your challenges. God is bigger than the people who are controlling and manipulating and pulling the strings behind the scenes. God will reveal them. And God will give you the validation that you need. Stop being afraid of your boss. Stop being afraid of your supervisor. Stop being afraid of these people who operate with a spirit of witchcraft where they hold you down and stymie and frustrate your forward movement. God is greater than these people. I'm speaking to someone and if you are a supervisor, if you are a boss, if you're a department head, if you're the head of a ministry, in Jesus' name, do not frustrate the move and the anointing and the power of God in the lives of his people. Allow God to do his best work and allow yourself to be a channel or a conduit through which the Holy Spirit will work. The thing I said that the authorities feared on the outside of the prison had now taken over the prison itself. This had to have been God. We cannot run from God. We cannot avoid him. He will find you deep in prison and he will convict you of your need for him. These men, when they went to prison, and I'm talking about the, the traditional prisoners, when they went to prison, they had no, they had no inclination that this is, is how it would have ended. But when God wants you, God will cause missionaries to go to jail to get the word to you. Oh, hallelujah. God can move in a dramatic way to get your attention. Hallelujah. He will find you and he will, he will reveal himself to you. I make this declaration then. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. As I reflect, as I reflected on this moving passage, I concluded that I will continue praising God despite my circumstances, despite what my situation may be dictating. I am not about to let people behind prison bars praise God while I am free and unfettered. I will not allow it. If they can do it in jail, I can do it in the free world. Hallelujah. I am speaking to someone at this very moment. Come and begin praising God. Even now, if you are in a prison of your own making, or if others have subjected you to the confines of a prison-like reality, start praising God now. You don't need uppers. You don't need downers. You don't need a stiff drink. You don't need a shot of nothing. You don't need to smoke anything. You don't need to imbibe anything. But in the name of Jesus Christ, start praising God now. Stop saying foolish things that someone has their hand on you. Stop saying idiotic thing that the enemy this and the enemy that. Lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Jesus. I feel what I'm saying because I've heard dozens, scores, testified about how God was able to extricate them from prison and how instead of moping and instead of becoming despondent, they took the decision, I will choose to praise my God. Hallelujah. Listen here. The, the Philippian jailer was certain that the prisoners had escaped and that his life, his life was over. He would have been dead. But God was about to give him real life, new life. And not only him, God was about to touch his household. What am I saying? I am saying that when the enemy decided to frustrate two men of God, they didn't count on an entire family being saved. They didn't count on the jailer's household being saved. They didn't count on, on, on the prisoners in the environment being impacted by prayer, praise, 
and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Had they known that, they probably would have found a way just to usher these men out of the community. But you see how God works. You see how God works. The presence of God was so rich in the place that all the prisoners, all the prisoners, that even though they were free to go in, in, in the traditional way of escaping, their bounds were loosed. But all the prisoners were right there. They were right there. But here's where God, God's voice now is coming through Paul. And he says, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. This is another miraculous happening right before their very eyes. We're not running for the door. We're not running for a way out. We're not saying that we have to go because there's an earthquake and our physical, our physical well-being is compromised. No, do thyself no harm. Praise not only change to the atmosphere, but also those in the environment. And so when the Philippian jailer realized what was happening or realized that this was not a sinister plot for these men to escape, he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Imagine if they were throwing a hissy fit in jail before the same man. This man recognized something transformational about these common men. And they said unto him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. You see, God saved you individually, but there's also whole house salvation. I don't care what is happening with your son, what is happening with your daughter, what is happening with your spouse, Jesus came to seek and to save all that were lost. And that may include a big chunk of your family. He will save them. As we try to wrap this up, and they spake unto him, not missing any opportunity, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. You see, it started off with prayer, praise, worship. Now the people are getting a word of the word of God and the gospel right there in his house, but in the precincts of the jail. Listen to this now. And he took them the same hour of the night after, after, he, was, after he was converted now and he washed their stripes. The enemy is now becoming your footstool. I want to say to you, stop wasting energy, hating people. Love those that despitefully use you and allow God to vindicate and to validate you. He started to wash their stripes and he was baptized. He and all his house straightway, no time to waste, take me to the water, let me be baptized. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. That's Acts 16, 29 to 34, just before we pray. What is, what, is the, what is the point of all of this message here today? The message, the point is simple. You have options. You have options. Don't take the beggarly option to fold up and to give in. But take the option that comes from the Holy Spirit. And you choose to praise God. And watch what God will do at the midnight hour in your life. That cancer in your body that tumor, that condition that the doctors seem not to be able to properly diagnose, watch what God will do at your midnight hour. Watch what God will do. You think you're losing your mind? Give it all to him and watch what God will do. This is the word of God for you, his children. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we bind every foul spirit. Every spirit that has come against your people, Lord, to cause us to live debilitating lives, we drive it far from your children in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare in accordance with your word, whom the Son set free is free indeed. We pray, Father, that every shackle now is broken. We pray that the, the, the shaking, the earthquaking, and the movement around your people is signaling a new opportunity, a new look and a new outlook 
for all of your children. Bless those who are, who are today struggling. Save those who are unsaved. Heal those who are sick and broken by life and the vicissitudes of life. Touch your people. Restore and renew us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, let the joy of the Lord become our strength. This we thank you for in Jesus' wonderful and powerful name. Amen and amen. God bless you, beloved. God keep you. I am Bishop Hewlett and Hannah, and I am telling you, I choose to praise him. And I'm encouraging you, you too, choose to praise him. God bless you. I love you. And we are looking forward to another occasion when we can lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful, wonderful time.